Hi, this is Sun Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Jonathan Berry, founder and CEO of Goliath. Jonathan, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Let's start with basics. Can you tell us what is Goliath all about and what problem are you folks trying to solve with it? Yeah, so Goliath is an IoT platform. And that generally means that we help people who build connected devices with the cloud services and infrastructure they need to build that IoT solution. Uh, and, and the problem we're trying to solve is actually the problem of hardware makers. Because I mentioned cloud a bunch of times and hardware companies historically don't have the expertise or the background to build you know, performant distributed systems. And so we are trying to be the cloud for hardware companies. And so we focus on, on those individuals and the challenges of building hardware and the cloud services they need. Uh, are we looking at any specific kind of hardware or services, or it could be a general purpose? Yeah, um, yes and yes. Uh, the, the one thing we learned over the years of working in the industry is that for a harder company, hardware really matters. So when we set out to build Goliath, it was really important to have choice in hardware. And you know, when we talk about hardware, I mean like these kinds of devices. For example, this is a um, microcontroller uh, that's running um, actually a RISC-V processor. And this goes in consumer electronics, industrial electronics, um, but our platform is specifically designed so that we can work on a broad range of devices in a bar in very different industries. So, uh, you know, um, commercial office buildings, factories, connected cities. And so on one hand, <clears throat> we work with a whole bunch of uh, devices and types of hardware, but then we also enable a bunch of different hardware companies to, to work in different industries. The kind of industry that you operate in, there are like you know, so many solutions, both hardware and software. Let's talk about um, open source you know, technologies that you leverage and why you pick these. Yeah, it, it actually, uh, to stand in the market, we want to support the broadest range of hardware. And when we're looking into how do we do that, um, we need to look at uh, embedded software. And because all these devices have some form of software that a, the hardware company has to write, as well as we have to integrate with. And uh, I, have, I have background working with a whole bunch of different solutions out there, but we got really excited about uh, Zephyr. Um, Zephyr, the real-time operating system that's uh, under the Linux Foundation. And we decided to actually build our solution on top of Zephyr. Uh, and not only is Zephyr a great open source operating system for embedded devices, but it also allows us to build our software that runs on top of Zephyr as open source solution as well. What kind of integration is there between Goliath and Zephyr? Just if you can go from technical aspect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And honestly, Zephyr gave us superpowers. Because I, I mentioned in the beginning that we want to support a whole bunch of hardware. One of the unique aspects of Zephyr, there, there are many, is that it supports a lot of different uh, devices. And that's not just from different manufacturers, but different uh, architectures, um, you know, configurations. So by building on top of Zephyr, we get access to 400 plus devices out of the box. But that also means we can use different radio technologies, different types of um, storage mechanisms. And so our layer, if you will, that sits on top of Zephyr can hook into all the APIs of Zephyr so that we can build a demo that swaps between Wi-Fi, cellular, Ethernet, and even, even Bluetooth. And so we... Uh, take advantage of all the capabilities of the operating system and uh, build upon it. And as we were talking about earlier, there are a lot of other solutions. So why did you kind of, you, know, you might be using something else as well, but why, what what benefits that you see with Zephyr? Uh, any any feature that you're like, hey, no, because of this feature, we are able to offer this, you know, functionality. I mentioned just the, the support of devices. Um, we can say that we probably support the most uh, broadest range of devices for any IoT solution out there because of Zephyr. Um, but there's also core fundamental design decisions that the Zephyr creators um, put into the operating system. First and foremost, it was built for IoT. Uh, you know, as we know, there are general purpose desktop operating systems and then there are specialized you know, flavors of Linux for routers. So Zephyr has a lot of features that are specific for building connected devices. So for example, the IP stack, the networking stack, the interfaces to network devices like, like modems and, and you know, 5G radios is part of the platform. And so we are able to hook into those so we can offer connected services without having to build our own networking stack, our own IP stack, uh, and actually have this uh, pretty robust solution out of the box that allowed us to build stuff on top. So when it comes to connecting our services, they have you know, very specific security requirements, very spe specific protocol requirements. We can just hook into the right layers of Zephyr uh, and talk to our backend uh, pr pretty easily. 
Right. Uh, and when we're talking about these stacks, you know, can you also talk about if there are other open source technology, which may be under Linux Foundation's umbrella, which you're also using in addition to Zephyr? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, so we try to bring the best uh, of, of both worlds, the hardware world and the cloud world. So we you know, get to leverage Zephyr to build our hardware solution, but on the cloud side, we need to build robust, scalable, secure cloud infrastructure. So we use you know, cloud native technologies like Kubernetes and containers, um, lots of other projects that are maybe under the CNCF, like OPA for um, authorization. And we're building a solution so that our companies that use us, uh, they get the best of cloud without having to build it themselves. Um, and so we continue to invest in uh, extending our uh, integrations with different cloud native technologies. Uh, do you folks, you know, of course you consume a lot of open source, but do you also get involved with any of the open source projects? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the you know, Zephyr itself is is an open source project, uh, but it also provides freedom. So you could, could choose to use Zephyr in a commercial product and keep it propri proprietary. Uh, but we decided to uh, develop our layer on top of Zephyr fully open source. So it's compatible with the open source licensing, and that allows us to do a few things. One, when companies come to us, they can see all of our code. Um, so from a security auditability aspect of the code that's running on their devices that we provide, they can, they can view it but it also allows us to upstream. So we've been upstreaming uh, uh, improvements to Zephyr, uh, contributions to the you know, very specific features, but also to the broader uh, program, um, because we believe that definitely on the device side, everything needs to be open and transparent. Um, and it's, it's been critical. Now, this is something that we have been talking about a lot, which is security. Uh, and we have talked about the security in Zephyr, but from, from you know, Goliath's per perspective, uh, how important is security to you folks and how do you kind of, you know, either it comes through Zephyr or you do something else on top of that to ensure that those devices are secure or data is secure or whatever information you folks are, I mean, not, not you folks, but those devices are gathering are also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's actually an industry joke that the S in IoT is, stands for security. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a misnomer. Um, it's, it's actually really sad um, that a lot of devices, you know, millions of devices that are being built are not secure. Um, not secure by design, not secure by implementation. Uh, and we take that very seriously. And uh, it's actually impossible to talk to Goliath Cloud without some form of security. But the challenge that we seek and uh, that we have to struggle through and, and, and people building connected products is that the security for, let's say, modern software, like servers and cell phones, um, while is similar, these tiny devices have 100th or 1,000th of the computing capabilities of you know, our servers. So you can do security. You can have secure communication, secure storage at rest, secure keys and certificates, but it has to be slightly different. So you can actually leverage a whole bunch of um, existing solutions. Um, fortunately, Zephyr has some of those capabilities already. So for example, they use a very popular um, TLS library called Embed TLS. And we can take advantage of that library because it's part of the uh, distribution, but then we have to tweak it in a very specific way. But for users of Goliath on our platform, it's pre-configured. So out of the box, they have secure communication, and we also have layers of, of additional security on, on top of it. Now, on the cloud side, that's actually where the biggest challenge lives, because a Zephyr device might have you know, robust security for an embedded device, but the solution on the cloud side is a completely different stack. You know, you're not running OpenSSL on a device, and you're not running embedded TLS in the cloud. So being able to um, extend uh, and build out our own uh, cloud solution so that we can have that robust end-to-end -end communi um, secure communication has been you know, one of the core principles uh, that we designed as the platform and the areas that we continue to invest in. Um, and we think that actually secure by default should be the standard in IoT, and we're, we're pushing that both in Zephyr and also in, in Goliath. While talking about security, we need to talk about you know, S-bombs or software bill of materials, uh, it, especially when you talk about uh, these, you know, IoT stacks, you know, it, it may be different from a lot of other, but, you know, still there are so many pieces that move into there. So we have talked to Zephyr community before, you know, you you know, Biden administration, it came out with an executor, we did mention uh, this bomb. So from your perspective, when you are building, you know, products, you know, based on some of these technologies, how do you kind of track what's going in there so can you talk from, about it, not only from Zephyr's perspective, but from your perspective? Yeah, I, I actually think this is a, almost like the software industry is growing up because in certain sectors, especially in hardware, 
something very similar to S bombs has been around for a long time, especially in safety critical and security critical applications. Uh, there's a standards compliance called MISRA. If you do anything in automotive or consumer electronics, you've had to gone through something that looks like S bomb, but it hasn't been accessible and requires consultants. And I'm actually really excited this trend towards software building materials uh, and open source software and commercial applications and services that make that easier. Um, yeah, you, we've talked about Zephyr and S bomb. You know, with a single command, you can actually get the S bomb for your Zephyr based application, which is which is amazing. Um, where I like to see, especially in the world of connected hardware, is the stack extend, right? Because you have a you have a device and the software on the device, and that software might be talking to a you know gateway or a 5G network. There's software there, and then the back end, like a Goliath back end, also has an S bomb. And so being able to start to produce those different layers um, is going to move the industry forward. And actually, you can go further down, and the hardware itself could have a software bill of materials because the hardware is designed in software. And uh, I know the Risk Five folks are looking at that. So one day in the future, it'd be awesome to say, "Here's the bill of materials from silicon all the way to uh, cloud." And so I look forward to that future. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, Jonathan, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about, of course, Goliath and uh, how you're leveraging Zephyr and how you're also kind of open sourcing your own technology. So thanks for those insights and the discussion. And I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us.